Hello everyone. And this is an introduction to shading. So it's sort of a continuation of the intro to Houdini series, but I wanted to focus more on shader building. Now this lesson, like eventually we'll start talking about mantra and you know, all of that stuff. But this lesson is much more generalized. I just wanted to talk about shader building in general but more specifically about the metalness roughness approach to shader building. Okay, like that's basically what I wanted to do. Okay, so uh, the first thing is, you know, what is the metalness roughness approach? And what are the advantages of it? Okay, so uh, the point is, you had an er the earlier approach to shader building and when I say shader building, I'm sort of specifically talking in this context where we're specifically talking about uh, solid objects, right? So we're talking about plastics and metals and, you know, hard surfaces. Okay, not, uh, we're not talking about skin or subsurface scattering or any of that stuff. And we're not talking about uh, like transparent objects. So this is primarily about, you know, building hard surfaces. So the older method for uh, for building uh, reflective surfaces was essentially the the specular and glossiness approach. Now you might have seen these uh, like if you if you're if you're an older user, you don't really need to see this lesson <laughs> because you probably know all of this stuff anyways. But if you're if you're still using V-Ray or if you're still using Corona, then uh, these are terms that are your, that you are used to. Actually, you're used to this term anyways, because most renderers still have an implementation of this. But yeah, so this is the older method, but it's not old, but um, yeah, most like metalness roughness is now starting to become a standard. Or I would probably say it's already is a standard. I guess so. But anyway, so the newer method is what is called as the metalness roughness approach. Now, where does this come from? So where it comes from is the Disney principal shader, which is why the new mantra shader is called the principal shader because it's sort of picking up the term from there. Uh, you even have the principal shader now in Blender, but you have variants of that in every render engine. Like in Octane, you have the universal material, which is the same thing. Redshift has an implementation of it within the Redshift material and the new Arnold shader in Arnold 5 also has an implementation of it. So the point is, uh, what exactly is the advantage of this over that? So the advantage or the reason uh, the principal shader was built up was primarily simplicity. So the thing is, if you look at, uh, you know, any of the materials, like, so you have like, so this is every, I have four renderers installed. So these are shaders from all four of them. So these two are Mantra, these two are Arnold, this is, uh, these two are Octane and Redshift only has one. So thank God for that. Anyway, so the point being, diffuse shading isn't really much of a problem. The problem comes up when you start working with reflections. And the problem is you have too many there are too many different specular models that you can work with. Okay, so you have like the standard IOR that you can work with. And then if you want to do like really accurate metals, you have complex IOR or IOR advanced. If you want a slightly artistic approach to complex IOR, you have color plus edge tint. And so it's like you, you kind of have to go like, okay, what do I use here? You know, which one do I work with? What works better? So the idea with the principal shader was to get rid of all of it and simplify the approach to shader building while still getting accurate results. So the question that comes up is that what is the problem with the older method and how does the newer method make it simple? So the problem with the older method is um, like there are three or four issues here. The first one is that your material is essentially broken up into like if you're doing a reflective shader, like let's say you're doing plastic, then what you have is you have the basic color, which is your diffuse color. Okay, and then you have the specular color. And then in order to define how reflective the object will be, you have the Fresnel IOR. 
And finally, you'll have the glossiness value. Let's not talk about, uh, we won't talk about like bump and normals and you know, any of that stuff. So immediately you have, you start having a bunch of issues. Firstly, let's say if you want to do a shader, which is half plastic and half metal. So let's say like this part is plastic. Okay. Like let's say this, this part is like, you know, blue plastic. Okay. And then this part on top should be metal. Now the problem that happens here is diffuse color is going to affect this area. And then the specular color will affect the specular color will affect this area. And then if that isn't enough of a problem, this has a different IOR value and that has a different IOR value. So this will be around something like 1.5 and depending on what metal you are going for, this will be somewhere around 10. So IOR values will generally range from something like, you know, like 1.5 is usually plastic and going all the way to about 20, which could be chrome. And then you have the glossy value, which actually, uh, which is always a little weird because it doesn't go from zero to one. It goes from one to zero. So one is shiny and zero is rough, okay, which kind of makes sense. But when you're building it, it's sort of like you have to sort of like flip your brain a little bit. So now the issue that happens is that firstly, if you're trying to build the diffuse color, because the diffuse color cannot affect the the metal area, your map will look, let's say this is my map. So my map is going to look like this part will be black wherever it's metal and wherever it's plastic will be blue. So this is what my diffuse map will look like. And then I will build a specular map, which will be the reverse of that, which is wherever there is diffuse, that will be black. And then wherever there is specular, depending on the specular color, this will be white. Or let's say if it's gold, then it will be yellow. So now you have two color maps. Then uh, let's say this is going to be slightly rough and then that will be shiny. So we have a third map where now, so this will be maybe like a dark gray, right? So this will be like a dark gray. And then, you know, this will be, because it's going to be shiny, this will be like a light gray. But the problem doesn't really stop there because now the problem is that you need a specific map to control the IOR, which, which is not going from black to white, which is going in like a numeric range from like 1.5 to 20. And that map is just really weird to try and build. So the way I would end up doing whenever I would be faced with an issue like this, which can be quite often, like if you're doing uh, let's say you're doing any kind of a hard surface model, you're doing a robot or something and uh, the robot has cables and the cables have like, you know, like a coating of rubber and uh, metal and you want to do a shader like that. So it immediately starts becoming problematic. And so what I would do eventually is just, I would get frustrated a little later and I would just end up building two different shaders. So I would build a plastic shader and a metal shader. So this would be my plastic shader and then this would be my metal shader. And I would just mix them together with, with a black and white map. Okay, so eventually I would just end up getting like two different shaders and just mix them together. So I would be like, yeah, this is too complicated. Let me just do this. And this would be quite often. Like it's not, this wouldn't be a, a scenario which would happen like, you know, on and off. This would be a lot of times. So what exactly does the metalness roughness approach to. Okay, so the metalness roughness approach uh, essentially simplifies this a lot more or really a lot. Okay, so what it does is the idea was that you have only one color value and every other value is just going to go from zero to one. Okay, so anything that you're building is essentially just going from zero to one and not going in the other direction. So it makes the whole process a whole process much more simplified. So what you end up getting is technically just three values. Okay. So we have, so let me just, yeah, let me find that color again. Okay. So what you have is we have the, uh, we have the basic color. Okay. And then we have the metal, the metalness, and we have the roughness. 
And metalness is a pretty interesting value because what it's doing is it is internally calculating an IOR, but it's just keeping it very fixed. So metalness at zero is technically an IOR of 1.5 and metalness at one is, I don't know what, but let's say an IOR of 15. So, so all you have to do is take a slider from zero to one and it'll automatically go from, you know, plastic to metal. And the color was the best thing is because there would be just one color channel. It would automatically, when, when you're at zero, this would be the plastic color. And then when you are at one, this would automatically become the metal shader. So you wouldn't have to do too much of work or you don't have to do too much of work. So what you end up getting in this case is something a lot more simpler. So if you're building the map for this, what you would end up getting is you have one color map, which is the bottom half is blue. That's my plastic. And the top half is gray, which is my metal. And then we need to specify the, the metalness map, which is essentially the bottom half is plastic. So that will be black and the top half is metal. So that will be white. And then finally you have the roughness, which is zero is completely, uh, so zero is shiny and then one will be fully rough, like as the term suggests. So depending on what values you want, you can just, you know, define that. So I want the plastic to be slightly rough. So that will be, let's say like a medium gray. And this will be like a light or like a darker gray because I want this one to be, I want the metal to be shiny. So rather than having like two different color maps and then trying to figure out the glossiness and you know, how do we set up the IOR for metal and plastic within the same shader, this approach, you know, simplifies it a lot more. Now this approach, because it simplifies stuff so much is now sort of like the standard and gets used everywhere. So you have primarily if you are, uh, if you're someone who uses substance painter or you're using like, uh, something like Quixel, then you are kind of used to it. I think the first time somebody implemented it was, well, besides Disney was essentially like game engines have massive implementations of this now. So unreal follows the metalness roughness approach and unity has the same thing. So the advantage of this is that having the same three maps, you can build the exact same shader in any render engine. Like you don't have to think about, because what I ended up realizing was the Fresnel IOR would work differently in different, in different render engines. So Fresnel IOR of eight would give me a different result in V-Ray and it would give me a different result in Octane. And it would give me a different result in like, you know, any other render engine. So there would never be a standard, right? Like if you would move maps from one shader to another, you would never know like, okay, now I, how much do I have to tweak it? And I think they all follow like the GGX roughness model. So that also is sort of like a standard where you get the same amount of blurriness on uh, specularity across the board. So the, so having standards is a good thing. <laughs> And this approach to it is definitely nice. So this is essentially what the metalness roughness approach is. All right. So this is basically it. So this is uh, intro to shader building lesson one. What is the metalness roughness approach? And then in the next video, we are going to try and build a basic shader using the metalness roughness approach. So you get an idea of what I'm, you know, what this whole talk was about.